Hi, this video is about a lumbar microdiscectomy. It's about the procedure itself, what it involves. Uh, you, perhaps you've been offered this operation you want to, or you want to find out a little bit more about it. It's one of the treatment options we offer at the Spine MDT to treat sciatica, especially when it's caused by a slip disc pinching the nerve. To find out more about sciatica, click the link to my other YouTube video I made about sciatica itself, uh, the different causes, where I also cover all the other different treatment options. But today's video specifically focuses on the microdiscectomy as a treatment option for treating sciatica. In the description below, there's also a link to my blog page where I've written a blog on lumbar microdiscectomy itself. So let's dive straight into it. Um, essentially, it's a minimally invasive operation to remove the bit of herniated disc that's pinching the nerve. So here we have a diagram showing uh, the human spine from the side view. This is the back and the front. And if we blow that up, this is a short segment of the lumbar spine back front. As you know, the spine is made of bones called vertebrae, which are these bones here. And these are cushioned by these little tissues here that we call discs. They're soft little cushions that just allow a bit of shock absorption between the bones. And at each level, a nerve leaves the spine that innervates a different muscle down the leg. Hence why we feel pain in the leg when a nerve is pinched as it is here. So the idea of the operation, it's carried out under a general anaesthetic. You fall asleep, to sleep, you're unaware of what's happening. Um, a very small incision is made just in the small of the back, in the midline up and down. Um, it's usually about a couple of centimetres big, no more than that. And it's just here at the back of the spine, allowing access to the bony arch at the back of the spine here. So this is a cross-sectional view. This is the back here, this is the front, uh, and then the side and the side. And this here is the spinal canal where all the nerves are and where the nerves leave the spine. So. The incision is made up here and then allows us an approach to access this little arch of, of bone here. And then under the microscope, we remove a little window, just a little window in this bone that gives us access straight down to this disc here and the nerve. Um, we tend to use surgical microscopes for this procedure because I believe it allows much better magnification and illumination of what we're of what we're working around. We're working for a very small wound, and this allows everything to be blown up and magnified so I get a crystal clear view of vital nerves that run down to your legs and help me carry out the procedure safely and avoid any damage uh, to the nerves. So this is the approach described again, usually a channel is made. Some people use an endoscope, that's one way of doing it. I just tend to prefer the microscope, but there are situations where an endoscope uh, can be better. Um, once access is made through the bony arch, the nerve is protected under direct vision, and it's just this herniated bit of disc, this bulging bit here, that is carefully removed. Once it's removed, we just lightly explore the disc space. We don't remove all of the disc away. We explore it for any loose fragments to prevent any further recurrences of discs uh, herniating immediately after the operation. And then once, once that's done, everything is removed and the skin is closed up with absorbable sutures uh, in the lower back. And that's, and that's pretty much the operation. Doing it for a minimally invasive approach allows for a, a faster recovery with less tissue damage. And we try and get patients up straight away after the operation. The benefits of the procedure, most of this data is actually on the British Association of uh, Spine Surgeons website. I've got a link to that in the description below. So there's approximately a 70 to 75 um, percentage um, improvement in leg pain specifically. But there is evidence that it does also reduce back pain if you also have leg pain. It's not done predominantly for back pain, it's done predominantly for uh, leg pain. Some patients still have some persistent leg pain, and a small number, of course, don't have any improvement, and there is a recurrence rate uh, with this. All operations we do have risks, and again, these risks are generic risks for, of overall practices. Uh, taken predominantly from actually from historic data and again this is also on the British Association of Spine Surgeons uh, page. When you go online you often read about the risks of paralysis, incontinence and you know all these 
scary things. Yes, it is a risk because we are working around the nerves that run down to your legs and your, and your bladder, but these risks are extremely low. Um, there's numerous studies, papers of case series, and these, you know, these are actually quite old uh, papers, but anything from one in 300 to one in a thousand uh, or less it is quoted. Any breach to the skin, whether you have an injection by someone, whether you have bloods taken or whether you have an operation, there is a risk of infection once you make an incision in the skin because bugs can get in. This is only in the region of around 1 or 2% and most of the time this can be treated uh, with antibiotics but very rarely you have to go back in, open up the wound and wash it out if the infection is persistent. Spinal fluid leak. Now if we go back up to the initial picture here here where we have the spinal canal where the nerves run up and down the spine the nerves in your spinal cord are bathed in a fluid um, that's lined by this sac called the dura it's, it's, it's the lining of the spinal canal very rarely that can get torn and you end up with a leakage of fluid um, it happens in about two to three percent of cases depending on which studies you read um, most of the time, that if that does happen, it can be repaired during the procedure, and that's usually the end of it. But sometimes we have to lie patients flat, and very rarely we have to go back in and carry out a further repair. Now, in front of the spine, in this region here, there are some major blood vessels that run up and down the spine and down to the legs. I've never seen this happen, but you, it, it's reported that um, it's been reported that instruments have been pressed a bit too far in and have caused uh, an accidental tear of those vessels and that can theoretically lead to a catastrophic hemorrhage that's extremely rare and in the literature um, it's quoted as one in ten thousand cases or so and about five percent of patients have the procedure all goes well uh, but unfortunately they get a recurrence of the symptoms at some point um, afterwards we talk in the blog we talk about alternative treatments that's covered in the video i mentioned earlier about um, sciatica and other ways to treat it again a lot of those risks are very rare and quoted from historic uh, data sets mostly patients we see do very well after this operation uh, most patients are up the very same day um, if, if the procedure is carried out first thing in the morning it's not uncommon to go home the same day even um, patients usually notice an instant alleviation of uh, the leg pain and have some pain just around the wound which gradually gets better week by week. I usually advise a period of about six weeks off work especially if you do a job where you're sat at a desk for long hours a day or even if you do a manual job really and you're, and you're lifting things. That's mostly for the just to allow the soft tissues to heal that little bit better and just give you that bit of comfort. Often you feel a lot better way before that, but it's often best to take that time. In that time, the last thing I expect patients to do is just sit around um, on the couch all day. I actually expect you to engage in some exercises that uh, our physiotherapists uh, advise you to help strengthen those muscles that surround the spine. Because remember, this often happens due to weakness of the muscles that support the spine and therefore um, the disc starts to wear and tear thereafter. So by strengthening the muscles that support the spine, that's how I, you can actually prevent uh, a recurrence uh, that we talked about. We at the Spine MDT normally use absorbable sutures, so there's no stitches to come out. Uh, we advise keeping the wound dry for a week or so. You can shower uh, with the dressings we provide, they will to proof dressings, you can shower as normal, but then after a week or so, you can take the dressing off. But when showering, avoid scrubbing the area, simply dab it dry and just allow the scab that forms to just fall off with time. That's how you get the best cosmetic result and also how you prevent uh, infection. I hope you found the video helpful. Please click on the subscribe button uh, so you can keep an eye out on further videos that I make. Our goal at the Spine MDT is to find the least invasive solution that offers the longest lasting result. Uh, so please feel free to call us on the number below or visit our website to find out about the different services we offer, our one-stop spine clinic, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.